must be working on the Rogue Owners distributor. Let's go see what he's up to. What's up, Pop? What's that? What are you doing? Making horsepower? No. I'm making 60 foot time. What? I thought that made horsepower. What? Recurving distributors? Yeah. No, it don't make horsepower at all. Huh. Really? No, it doesn't. You know what it does? What's that? It makes 60 foot time. Yeah. Okay. Shall we explain? Yes. Okay, everybody. When you do your distributor and you set your timing, you do not set it for your initial timing. Yeah. Never. You set it for your total timing. And your total timing will always be the same at that point, no matter what. Now, how you get there is the most important point, and we will do videos on that. But, this, when you do your total timing, it involves two things. You remember what they are? Let's see. Is it, like, total and mechanical? Mechanical and initial oh. make total. No vacuum. You take your vacuum line off, but your initial timing and your mechanical timing is your total timing. Yeah. Okay? Once you establish your total timing, there are no power gains to be had. The thing here is, is your initial timing right. and your curve, your advance curve, how fast it advances, mm -hmm. that will increase your 60 foot time. Oh, okay? all right. And, and here's the whole point is when you're on a dyno with yeah. your engine mm -hmm. and you're at say the engine makes its max torque at 3500 rpms and revs past that if your distributors totaled out at let's say the roadrunner timing at 32 it's never going to change past that it will always be that way even if you had vacuum hooked up it will always be that way because there's not enough vacuum in the engine at wide open throttle to change the vacuum okay so Here's the whole situation, though. When you're at idle and you go to start your engine, um, if the timing, if your initial timing is good, then the engine starts nice and crisp and fast. Okay? And the engine idles with a higher vacuum. When it idles with a higher vacuum, the carburetor is better. The engine's more responsive. Everything is better for your engine. So when you're sitting on the line ready to go and you stand on the gas, that initial timing is what's going to allow your engine to jump up to its maximum torque level and allow you to take off, especially with an automatic transmission. On a manual transmission, you put it at the RPM, RPM you want, then drop the clutch and go. So initial timing... And then the how quick it gets to total is what I'm doing here. Your total is where your maximum horsepower is going to come out. And at that, at that, it will never change. So this does not change horsepower. It changes gas mileage. And it changes startability and 60 foot time. That's what this does. Let's do a quickie example here. On the Roadrunner. It, its initial timing needs to be around 18 degrees, and its total needs to be 32. And we're going to do a video very shortly here that's going to explain why it's 32 and why it's at 18. If we use a stock distributor, a stock distributor, if we set it at 5 degrees, mm -hmm. it will advance out to 32, most of them. How do we get it to 18? and only go to 32. That's what we're doing here. And this will kind of help explain why each engine is different. And um, there are more variables than these, but these are the basics, okay? So we, let's just start with things that can, well, let me just start with this, okay? If you're an engine builder, I wrote me a little note here. If you're an engine builder, you build the engine for less timing. Now, what I mean by less timing is if your engine can run 38 degrees total timing, which is 
minus vacuum. That is your initial plus your advance. Or if you do a lockout distributor and you set it up for 38 degrees, you really would rather have your engine be at 32. But there's more power at 38 than you have to set it at 38. So that's a way that, that is something that changes the way you build your engine. If you put more compression in there, it, you can lower that ignition timing, things like that. So as a builder, you build it for less timing. But as a tuner, you tune it for higher timing. So it's the engine builder's job to lower the timing, and it's the tuner, the race tuner, to get it as high as he can. Too high is blowing it up. Too low is leaving power on the table. So we don't want that. So that's our first job. Okay. Now let's go through this list here. These are things that change ignition timing. And again, there are other things out there. Um, I didn't mention headers. Uh, they, they can change your timing. But there are other things there. Okay, so first of all, things that can raise your timing. Lower compression. And lower compression, I'm not talking about compression ratios. Obviously, if your compression ratio goes down, then the compression will go down. Or camshafts. Okay, there are relationships there that reduce compression. If you're running a restricted carburetor at a high RPM, the compression goes down. So there are other variables. So lower compression, you can raise the timing. Larger cylinder bores, you can raise the timing. So do you know why on a larger piston you can raise the timing? It's because it's got a burn because it takes longer to burn because the piston's so big. Right. It's got a large surface area. Yep. Okay. Lower intake manifold temperatures can raise your ignition timing. Mm hmm And the reason for that is because if we put hot air in the engine, our compression will make it even hotter. And that temperature excites the air-fuel mixture. And that excited air-fuel mixture burns faster okay engine coolant temperatures well that's obvious because it's the same reason our, our intake manifold temperature um our intake the cool air coming into the engine it's the same thing if you got a hot engine then you heat the air fuel mixture and that causes uh, the timing to need to go down because the, the burn speed goes up so lower coolant temperatures you can advance the timing. Larger camshafts. Larger camshafts have more overlap, trap less air fuel mixture. When you trap less, the compression goes down, the burn speed goes down. Higher octane gas. People think that high octane gas is some violent chemical that makes fuel explode harder and expand more. No, it doesn't. Higher octane gas is more stable fuel, and more stable fuel simply takes more time to burn. So we need to advance the timing when we run higher octane fuel. Now open chamber. Open chambers just plain simply have more area that takes a little more time. Now the flat top piston, that would be a fast, faster setup than a dome, except that if you're running 40 thousandths, 80 thousandths below deck, it would take more ignition timing because the compression would be very low and you would have a large area to consume. And that would be the same with the dish piston. Okay, so let's go on down here on the, the lowering the ignition timing. All right, so higher compression is going to lower your, uh, your timing. Not compression ratio. Yes, your compression ratio will make the pressure go up. But it's the relationship between what you have built into your engine and your cam timing. Okay. A smaller bore. Well, like you're talking about with a big bore, it takes longer to consume. Well, a smaller bore takes less time to consume. So we don't need to light it as soon. Hot intake manifold. Hot intake manifold not only loses power because you have less dense air fuel mixture. And less dense means less oxygen. That's what we want is oxygen. But it also 
when the piston starts to go up, it's already started at a higher temperature, so it gets really hot and it excites the heck out of the air fuel mixture. And yeah, um, running it on uh, racing on a cool day means more oxygen. Yeah, you can run better. Yeah, you go a lot faster. Okay, so engine coolant temperature, if it's hot, same thing, same thing. Smaller camshafts, they trap more air fuel mixture. That's why the engine makes more torque with a smaller camshaft. Mm -hmm. It traps more air fuel mixture. That makes the compression go higher. Lower octane. Octane is basically the speed of the fuels burning. And that lower octane burns faster than higher octane. A lean carburetor will cause the combustion temperature to go up. And that combustion temperature going up will excite the air fuel mixture on the next charge. You'll have different situation. You'll have hot glowing spots, things like that. And quench. Quench effectively reduces the combustion chamber size and makes the burn uh, more complete faster. So those things go down. Now, these are many times confused with timing. And sometimes they are related to timing. If you have ping or detonation, pinging, it can be caused by the timing being too high. So you would retard your timing. And detonation is caused many times by the ignition timing too high. Detonation is air fuel mixture that lights without a spark. Sometimes you get pre-ignition and that is air fuel mixture lighting without a spark. But you'll get detonation from a spark starting the burn and as the burn increases the pressure, a hot spot in the chamber will light that fuel off somewhere else and make the two flame fronts crash into each other. And that's like taking a hammer to your piston. Okay, so that's that can be done by ignition timing too high. Pre-ignition. Um, the things that cause pre-ignition are usually sharp edges. Okay, sharp edges in the combustion chamber, too hot of a spark plug. That will be, and I put that down here, hot spots and, and, and uh, too hot of a spark plug. If they start glowing red, they can cause pre-ignition. All right, I added this here, one small chamber. And what that basically means is if your engine block is not machined correctly, nice and square, well blueprinted, or you have a cylinder head that has one chamber much smaller than the rest of the chambers, you'll get one smaller chamber. And if you don't CC your cylinder heads, that means that one cylinder will ping or be at its max ignition timing before the rest. And when we're running old school stuff, when we adjust the distributor, we change all eight cylinders. We can't just change one. Now, if we computerize it, we can. So those guys that are what they call tuner, don't understand the name. But what they call a tuner, they get to play with those things. They can change each individual cylinder. And so they can find the one that makes sure it stays at what it should be, as well as creep the others up. But the first one that starts to either ping or be, you know, at its max, the rest have to stay right there with it. And they may be able to have two or three more degrees. And that's a lot of power wasted. Okay. Now, this, uh, just Mopar Joe did a video at the machine shop. And he had those guys show how to check deck height and where that deck ends up to make the deck perfectly square and perpendicular to the, to the crankshaft bore. And that makes each piston come to the exact same height and all those things we really want so that we don't have one small chamber. Very important. And it is all related to our ignition timing. And when you're going to go out there and run a distributor type ignition system, this is pretty important. It can get expensive. It's worth every dime, in my opinion. All right, so now that I've showed you the list, the reason I showed you the list was all these different things affect one way or another your timing. Uh, there's more than just that list, but all cars are different. Everybody has a different combination between camshafts, compressions, intake, exhaust. All these things affect it. And that's why I wanted to show you that list. Not everybody's stuff is the same. So you can't just take what Bill has and go do what Joe has and go do what Greg has and go do what John has. You can't do that. You have to know where it's going to be. So we're going to have a future video that is going to show two things. How to check your timing, where it is, 
that's not nearly as critical but it's still good to know where you're at and then how when do we uh how do we know where where it should be you've built your engine you've already put all your things in it where should your timing be and the uh there's ways of finding out and so that is in a, a video coming up now one quickie warning don't just advance your timing right now if your distributor is not recurved don't just advance the timing you do that and it'll show you how nice it'll idle and how good it starts go ahead and do that but don't drive it that way because if you advance a distributor that's made to have 25 degrees of advance in it and you set your timing up to 15 or 20 where I have the Roadrunner and the Barracuda it'll advance to the point that you will detonate the engine to death you will ping it to death and it will break rings it will break ring lands in your piston it'll, it'll start smoking it'll make terrible noises and you don't want that you're gonna change parts you didn't expect expect to change don't just advance your timing it is critical that you do but it's critical that you do it right you're the tuner it's the tuners job to advance it as far as he can okay if the engine can't take it you will break it all right so i think that's enough for now so in a future coming up very shortly video will be timing where to set it okay all right cool so uh jacob what do you do when you like a video